YouTube, Madam Roy back again. Back to you with a SSD installation. That's right, guys. It's finally happening. I apologize for the delay. There were some extenuating circumstances. I was extremely busy last week. Um, I had a lot of uh, little jobs. And um, there were a couple days where my allergies were really acting up. And, of course, we also had the bad weather. So the combination of those three things made it almost impossible for me to do it before this. But I am free today. And that is going to be the subject of this video. I have the... SSD right here in front of me. This is the Crucial MX200. This is a MSATA or an M2 SSD. And uh, this is going to be going into my Dell XPS 8700. I have not actually opened this yet. It is brand new. Um, I need to get the tools together and I do need to find two screws that will work in this. So I'm going to go ahead and put the camera down for a few minutes. And next thing you see will be me installing this. So talk to you guys in just a couple of minutes. Alright, so as you can see I have the case open and the actual M SATA slot is right under the video card here. So the first thing I'm going to have to do is go ahead and pull the video card out so I can get to the uh, SSD card slot. That shouldn't be too hard, it's just pulling this bracket off, disconnecting a few cables and then the video card should just slide right out pretty much as easily as it went in. Alright, and after a few minutes of fiddling, uh, the RS R7 360 is out. Let's just show you guys this card again. This thing is a beast. I've actually been very impressed with it so far. Had a few stability issues when I first installed it, but the drivers, it seemed to be an issue with the Catalyst software, and they actually seem to have corrected it on the last uh, update, but as you can see, it is an R7360. But once again, that is not the topic of this video. What is, is this slot right here. This is your M2 slot for the M SATA, and what I need to do is actually pull two screws out that are going to work. They should just be regular laptop style screws, so I'm going to go ahead and put this case um, on its back, and we'll go ahead and give this a try. Okay, I don't know why, but the person who sent this to me put a whole bunch of this scotch tape on it, so I actually just had to cut a slot on the side, and let's see if I can actually get this out. It's going to be a real pain, but ah, there we go. Come on. All right, and here she is. This is the Crucial MX200 M SATA, if this will focus. And this is the 250 gigabyte version. And let's go ahead and give this an install. So basically, I so you to move this out of the way. I need to go ahead and just insert it into the little slot here. you got to do this at an angle. From what I understand and then it just goes ahead and sits here now I just need to find two screws that will actually hold this in place I'm gonna try to get all this out of the way so you can see it a little bit better once again go in at an angle make sure it's in the slot and then you just go ahead and push it down into place so let me go ahead and find two screws that will work in here and then that's pretty much it that's the installation guys all right guys well it is installed um, I found two screws that would fit in there and they do fit perfectly however I had to cannibalize them from my uh, two old Dell dimension uh, 51 uh, was it 1501s it, they're actually from the uh, modem but I really don't care because these things are actually still glued in place and I'll probably just wind up taking the modems out anyway because I'm never gonna wind up using them anymore so Worked out in the long run. Now I need to reinstall the video card and we'll be ready to go ahead and give this a try. But that is pretty much it for installing in uh, MSAID SSD in one of these Dell XPS 8700s. Not as hard as I thought, not, not very difficult at all. All right, the uh, computer is back in its spot and all hooked up. I do at least temporarily have to have this USB keyboard hooked up to it because I need to get into the BIOS and make sure that um, it's finding the M state and that all the settings are correct. So without further ado, let's go ahead and give her a try. Now I do not exactly remember which key gets into the BIOS. If it's, I think it's delete with this computer. I'm going to have to try a few different ones. It's either usually escape, F1, or delete. And one of those must have worked because it looks like we are getting into the BIOS. Oops. 
see what happens here. Well, maybe not. All right, I'll start filming again once I get into the BIOS itself. All right, guys, I actually had to look it up. Apparently, on these, it's F12 that gets you into the BIOS, so let's see if that indeed does bring up the BIOS. says so just to keep hitting it. Uh, yep, here we go. All right, so we're going to get into the BIOS setup here. And what I need to find out is onboard device configuration. And I need to find out where you go to look for the MSATA drive. It's probably under hard drives here. Hmm. Let's see what we got. I uh, believe it or not, guys, I actually have not been into this BIOS yet. So let me look around here a little bit and find out exactly where you look for the hard drive. Oh, here we go. Right at the bottom here, you see where it says SATA information, MSATA. And as you can see, it is showing that my crucial MX200 250 gigabyte drive is there and working. So the very next thing to do is install Windows 7 on here because I need to install Windows 7 and then I need to go ahead and upgrade that to Windows 10. Now I'm not actually going to show you guys the installation because let's face it, that, that's kind of boring and it's been done to death. Uh, but before I leave the BIOS here, I guess I'll show you guys around here a little bit. As you can see, it is a Core i7-4790, not the K, so not the overclocking model, but same as when I got it. Uh, let's see, we have uh, level 1 cache on this is 256K, level 2 is looks like 1 megabyte, and level 3 is uh, 8 megabytes. Uh, again, memory is uh, 16 gigabytes. And someone had actually mentioned that they've never had a motherboard install the memory properly, basically configure it properly. Well, as you can see, it is 1600 megahertz DDR3 RAM, and that is what it's set at. And um, it's fortunate that this board did install it properly because with this board, there is no option to manually configure the memory. It's all done automatically in the BIOS, so I really had no other options. Well, let's go ahead and install Windows, and I'll show you guys how fast she runs. Talk to you in a little bit. All right, guys. Well, I finally have the uh, restoration of the uh, Dell Windows 8 image uh, going through. I ran into a few snags, though. Every time I would try to choose which hard drive I wanted it to restore, it would uh, choose one of the other two um, SATA hard drives, either the one terabyte or the two terabyte drive that was installed. So the way I fixed that, I took the side case off and just disconnected those two drives. So for right now, the only drive that's actually uh, active is the M SATA SSD. And once I did that, of course, Windows defaulted to that drive. Now once the installation is complete, I'm going to go ahead and install Windows uh, 10, the update on here. And then I'm going to go ahead and install all of my other applications and everything. And only when I'm completely done there will I go ahead and put the uh, two terabyte hard drive back on. I am not going to reconnect the one terabyte Western Digital Drive that came with this initially, my original boot drive. Because if I do, I think it's going to confuse the BIOS. What I'm actually going to do is probably pull that drive out. There's nothing on there that I actually need. Format that and either put it back in here or maybe use it in another build. Well, that's all I'm going to show you guys for right now. I don't want to bore you. I mean, I know this is kind of this is kind of boring right here. Some of you guys might like it, but uh, I'm not going to hold the camera here while this installs. So the next thing you'll see will be Windows 10 on this computer. Talk to you guys in a little bit. All right, everybody. So as you can see, um, I've actually installed Windows 8. Right now, I'm downloading the uh, Windows 10 upgrade for this. Uh, it was apparently supposed to do it automatically once Windows 8 installed, but for some reason it errored out, so I just went to um, the Windows 10 download site and downloaded the toolkit, and as you can see, it is downloading. It is incredibly fast. I, I must say I'm impressed with it so far, whereas it used to take me about a minute and a half to boot up the computer. It actually booted up uh, the, on Windows 8 in about 15 seconds. So probably going to do some benchmarking when this is done. But 
as of now everything is working really nicely I just have a lot of work ahead of me uh, reinstalling all my applications but like I said luckily everything I had on here my pictures my movies all that stuff was backed up to the 500 gigabyte uh, Western Digital so all that stuff's gonna stay on there and it's also been backed up to the internal 2 terabyte hard drive so after all the apps are installed I will be set all right, so it's a few hours later, and uh, everything's working well. I've pretty much installed all the uh, applications and the drivers I need onto the SSD. The very last thing I'm doing here, I actually booted up a Cronus True Image 2016, and I'm formatting the uh, original boot drive, which was that Western Digital 1 terabyte, and that's just going to become extra storage. So once this is done, I'll reboot the computer and I'll show you how fast she is. Alright guys, I've decided to make this a two-part series because I think the video is just going to run a little too long. I'm going to go ahead and finish it up here, upload this, and part two tomorrow will be some benchmarking and testing of the new SSD. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Please remember to like and subscribe. And as always, have a blessed day everybody.